man, it's crazy because I come on here every once in a while and I'm like, dang, man, like I've really grown up with Mark Rogers. I've been listening to you since I was in seventh grade, man. Now I'm a sophomore in college. <laughs> oh, man. Really? It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, I started watching you back when I was in middle school. Um, I think it was like the first time Clemson and Alabama had played in the college football playoffs. I've been watching a lot of Alabama and Cincinnati previews. I haven't watched yours yet. I'm getting ready to do mine. And I kind of feel like a lot of people are disrespecting Cincinnati and a lot of people, I haven't seen yours yet, but a lot of people haven't really watched Cincinnati play other than the Notre Dame game. And I feel like not too many people realize just how good Cincinnati is. I feel like a lot of people are giving Cincinnati that Notre Dame treatment or that G5 treatment. They're like Cincinnati's a G5 school. They'll never beat Alabama. But I believe when – Alabama played Notre Dame. They were like a 20-point favorite, I believe. Vegas only has Alabama as a 13.5-point favorite for a reason. And when you look at Cincinnati, I was going back and forth with one Alabama fan. He was quick to bring up the 24-17 talent composite rankings. And I was telling him, I said, Cincinnati, you can't really judge them based on where they are in the team talent composite rankings because Cincinnati isn't a school that brings in four or five stars every year. They're a school that they bring in three stars, maybe a couple four stars, and they develop them. And a lot of people aren't really taking into account the player development that Cincinnati has done. If you look amongst their roster, they at least have at least nine players who are going to be projected to be drafted in the upcoming 2022 NFL draft. And I just kind of wanted to, you know, state my case for why Cincinnati can pull off the upset. So, so your, your my case... First re- okay, go ahead. So my first reason is Cincinnati has the best cornerback tandem in the nation. We already know about Amon or Stoss Gardner. He hasn't allowed a single touchdown in all his years playing college football. Then you have Kobe Bryant, who a lot of people don't know about, but he is also one of the best cornerbacks in America. He won the Jim Thorpe Award. So you look at Alabama's passing attack, they're already without John Metchie. And a lot of people keep coming with the assumption that Alabama is just magically going to have somebody who steps up. But if that was the case, there was a re- people forget there was a reason why Alabama had to go into the transfer portal and get Jamison Williams. That's because they weren't really all that set at wide receiver. Then you lose John Mechie. So essentially, you're either going to have Jamison Williams being guarded by either Kobe Bryant or Mark Gardner, I'm trying to figure out where the other receiver is going to come at and really do damage because these are two of the top cornerbacks in all of America. Then you got Maj Sanders, who is projected to be a second or third rounder in the 2022's NFL draft. Cincinnati has really good linebacker play. They really get downhill. They're really good when it comes to getting after the quarterback. One of their linebackers had over 100 tackles. The second one had 88. So you look at their whole entire defense, they're athletic, they're fast, and they're really aggressive when it comes to pass efficiency. Now, I do worry about how their interior of their defensive line is going to perform against Alabama because I believe they run a 4-2-5, and they have been prone to give up some big gains through the ground. So I am expecting Alabama to have a lot of success running the football. But when it comes to passing the football, I don't really know if Alabama is going to have the success against Cincinnati that a lot of people think they have. Because when they played Georgia, and I've been telling Georgia fans this all year, 
I was never sold on Georgia's secondary. When you have a good pass rush, it it kind of shields your corners because your corners don't have to guard and coverage for all that long. And on top of that, Georgia hasn't really faced – Georgia didn't face a team that was really able to test them because most of the teams they faced, they were able just to dominate them up front. Now, Alabama's offensive line really surprised me with how they performed in the SEC championship game. This is the same off the line that gave up, what, six to seven sacks against Auburn. I'm still not all that sold on Alabama's offensive line. Yes, they had a very good showing against Georgia, but can we really just go off one good showing and just ignore how this offensive line has performed all year? This offensive line for Alabama has been inconsistent all year along the secondary. Cincinnati also has Desmond Ritter at QB. And we already know if you're trying to win a national championship in college football, you got to have a superstar quarterback. Cincinnati has that. They have that in Desmond Ritter. They have a guy who can make the plays, who's somebody who they can count on. And I'm not expecting Cincinnati to come out here and, you know, run the football all day against Alabama. I do believe they're going to have to be able to get it done through the air. And I believe that can happen. You got Alex Pierce, one of the top rated senior wide receivers that is going to be eligible for the draft. Then on top of that, you also have Josh Wild, pretty solid tight end. They have a pretty solid receiving corps. And Alabama secondary has also been inconsistent that year at times this season. Now they do have a really good front seven. Will Anderson, don't know why Aiden Hutchinson was picked over him in the Heisman voting when Will Anderson had the same amount of sacks and had like 31 tackles for loss. So their front seven is really good, but their secondary is really inconsistent. And I feel like not enough people are really giving Cincinnati a fair assessment. Cincinnati's team probably is one of the most talented in America. I wish people would stop paying so much attention to the team talent composite rankings because not enough people take player development into account. And that's kind of my reasons why I feel like Cincinnati can pull off the upset because I feel like if Cincinnati's offense gets rolling and Alabama gets down and they have to end up throwing the football to win, I think the advantage to, towards Cincinnati because then you're playing towards Cincinnati's strength, that secondary, the fact that Alabama doesn't really have a proven number two. We know how good Jamison Williams is, but you're essentially going against two All-American corners, Amar Gardner first team, saw um, Kobe Bryant second team. So I, the more I research and the more I look into this game, the more I lean Cincinnati, even though, you know, it is Alabama. Alabama proved a lot of people wrong in the SEC championship game. But I feel like this is a game where Cincinnati can come in and prove a lot of people doubting them wrong because this team is a lot more talented than what a lot of people give them credit for. All right, JT, I think you make a really good um, series of points there especially concerning the matchups uh, with Alabama having the football. So you make a lot of good points. Uh, John Mechie's going to be missed. Uh, he's a guy that caught almost 100 passes this year. So it's difficult not to miss him. Ja'Cory Brooks, uh, look out for him. He could make some plays in this game. Um, it goes back to protecting the quarterback because when Alabama struggled against LSU and Auburn in particular, they couldn't protect Bryce Young. He still had really good games, but they couldn't run the ball. They couldn't protect Bryce Young. And like you say, they somehow fixed an offensive line in a week between the Auburn game and the Georgia game. And they started a couple new players up front and made some changes and it worked. And I, I wasn't surprised by Alabama's performance. I guess I was surprised at how easily they won that game. Uh, I was not surprised that they won the game but just the difference in offensive line play in one week was pretty startling. So I got to expect that that's going to continue to be worked on and improved and great corner play is important, but even great corners can't hang in coverage forever. 
And I just think that if Cincinnati can't get to Bryce Young, that he's still going to have a field day because Alabama has layers and layers of talented wide receiver. And even though it's not experienced, proven talent, all you have to do is go to the last play of the Auburn game. And Shakori Brooks made a phenomenal play in the corner of the end zone. He only made like five catches this year, but when it was a clutch situation in a game that they had to win, he did. And he was arguably the number one receiver coming out of high school. So I, I think that Alabama is going to be able to, with Slade Bolden and Brooks and Billingsley, they're going to find options uh, through the air. I don't see Cincinnati having much offensive success consistently against Alabama. I just don't see it. They're not going to be able to run. I cannot see in any way that Cincinnati is going to mount a running attack against Alabama. I just don't think they'll be able to run the ball. And if you can't run the ball, you're pretty dead. Uh, I'm not disrespecting Cincinnati, but understand, JT, that if you look at the history of this playoff, uh, there are typically more blowouts than not. And most of those blowouts I anticipated and predicted, not every one of them, but most of them. And I wasn't necessarily disrespecting. Uh, those are all good football teams, but there are levels to this. I'm going to quote one of my favorite YouTubers. There are levels to this. And uh, I really, I've not made a prediction on the game. We reserve that for, for Patreon, but uh, maybe I'm giving it away to a certain extent where I, I do think that there is a significant talent gap between these two teams. Uh, Cincinnati did show us something. Uh, they, they did play one quality team this year and they went to Notre Dame and won by two scores. And that's significant. Uh, they better not rely on a field goal kicker. They don't have one really. Uh, if it comes down to that, uh, but they went to Notre Dame and won by two scores. So on a given day, but I'm not going to put Notre Dame anywhere close to Alabama's Lee. I think that there's, I think what college football has shown us over the last 10 years and certainly during the playoff era is that there's a pretty wide gap between being one of the two or three best teams in the country and being somewhere else. And I think Cincinnati's somewhere else. They're seven, they're eight, they're nine, they're somewhere like that. Um, you might be right, but uh, I'm thinking this is not going to be the best football game we've ever witnessed. Yeah, you and the points you made, like I had the same viewpoint, like I'm not sitting in Cincinnati to have success on the ground unless it is with the Desmond Ritter and we have seen dual threat quarterbacks in the past give Alabama some problems, but I think their defense has kind of evolved to the point that now they're not really gonna get caught off guard. But I don't know, I kinda of just maybe I'm Maybe I'm factoring a little bit more optimism, and I know a lot of people go by the recruiting rankings. I just kind of feel like when you factor in the player development that Cincinnati has and the fact that they have so many guys who are going to get drafted next year, I kind of take that into account also. And then they have a lot of experience. like They have like nothing but upperclassmen, really. And I think Alabama – Kind of when you look at the wide receivers, they're hoping for one of their young guys to step up. And, you know, maybe I'm giving Cincinnati a little bit too much credit because they haven't faced the quarterback up to Bryce Young's caliber and they haven't really faced a team that has really been able to effectively throw the football talent-wise. I don't know. It's just like I'm kind of on the fence. Like I, I do want to lean Cincinnati because it. I do feel like Cincinnati does have some ways that they can attack Alabama. But at the same time, like what you said, it is Alabama. But I just kind of wanted to stay the claim for you know why Cincinnati may be a little bit slightly overlooked in this game at the same time they are only a 13 and a half point favorite and I say only 
But that's only because, like, when you look at when Notre Dame has faced Alabama in the past, Notre Dame has been an underdog by at least 20. Cincinnati is only 13 and a half. But I don't know, but I appreciate you for taking my call, Mark. 